Morning Muggles! Today we are going to be doing a review of the new Fantastic Beasts film, Crimes of Grindelwald. So the way this review and this video is going to work is I'm going to do the first half quickly going over a spoiler free review. So if you haven't seen the film, you are free to watch up until that point. And then after that I'm going to go into all the spoilers and I'll make it very clear when you need to leave the video if you haven't seen the film because I will be talking all spoilers, I will not be holding anything back. So if you don't want to be spoiled, make sure you leave at the time code displayed on the screen now. So, it wasn't as good as the first film, was it? Okay, 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 so here's what I mean. I loved the first Fantastic Beasts film. I thought it was great for a whole load of reasons that I'm not going to go over in this video. This film just didn't hold up by comparison in a lot of ways. There were still some moments which I thought were absolutely great, but there were also some moments which I thought just weren't great, and overall I'm not sure how this film fits into the overall plot that's going to come in for the whole five films. So I felt that there were some bits of the film that were really rushed, and then some bits of the film where the pacing wasn't fast enough and not much seemed to be happening. Overall, the plot just seemed a bit meh compared to the first film and I'm not sure what purpose it's going to serve in the overarching story. I'm kind of worried that this film was quite filler. I also feel that to understand this film you need a lot of Harry Potter knowledge. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because I have a lot of Harry Potter knowledge so I kind of really enjoyed those bits of it where I had to kind of dig deep into what I remembered about Harry Potter but what I did quite like about the first film was it felt open to people who weren't necessarily huge in the Harry Potter world and didn't know anything. So I know a lot of people who enjoyed it who hadn't watched Harry Potter in nearly 10 years. Whereas this film I think would confuse a lot of people who aren't huge Harry Potter fans. However, it needing Harry Potter prior knowledge meant that the film did really well kind of doing Harry Potter fan service. So there were loads of parts in there with callbacks and Easter eggs that were just for Harry Potter fans, which I really, really enjoyed. And I know I'm going to be able to watch it loads of times and find more things that I definitely missed on the first viewing. So I love that part of it. And as with the first film, the cast of actors is just superb. It's incredible. They're all so talented and perfect for the role. I can't go over all of them because there's so many that I loved, but just to name a few, Jude Law as young Dumbledore was amazing. He really captured the spirit of Dumbledore from the books, which I actually don't think either portrayals of Dumbledore in the original films captured, so that made me really, really happy. Dan Fogler, who pays Jacob, was amazing as he was in the first film. I think he's the best actor out of all of them and I absolutely love his performance. Eddie Redmayne was again amazing, he just captures Newt Scamander so so well and I also love Zoe Kravitz who plays Lita Lestrange, she was amazing so yeah the cast was just fantastic. They really really make these films and I get really excited to see them in the later installments because I just love their acting so much. And again, as with the first film and as with all the Harry Potter films, the sets, the costumes, the special effects, all that side of it was first class. It's one of the best in all films I've ever seen. You really did feel like you were in Paris or London in the 1920s. The clothes were so gorgeous, so perfect for each character. There was so much thought that went into all this background detail and I'll go into it further because there's kind of spoilers in the spoiler section, but the special effects, the creature effects, which are done by Nick Dudman, were like amazing and it's one of my favourite parts of these films. So that just, again, the actors and the effects really carry these films because they're just so high class. So that is the end of my spoiler free section. I'm now going to be moving into major spoilers and I'm not going to be giving warnings for each one. So if you haven't seen the film, please leave now. And if you have seen it, did they try to put the Titanic in Fantastic Beasts? I'll come back to the boat bit later. So I mentioned earlier that the film felt rushed and where I really felt that happen was with Queenie and Jacob at the beginning. So they were one of my favourite parts of the first film. I really loved seeing their relationship grow and I just felt kind of 
too thrown in at the beginning when they were already together and kind of traveling together because I felt like I'd missed out on something I really really wanted to witness which was them getting back together and then becoming an item so I just felt it was a bit rushed to skip over that and then the dragged out feeling I mentioned basically came from the entire middle section of the film so essentially all the characters get split up which I found a little bit frustrating because again one of my favorite parts was seeing all the interactions between the characters but early on in the film they split them all up so they're all separate they're not able to interact with each other and a huge then middle section of the film is just them all trying to find a way back to each other and all kind of missing each other at different times without much actual plot going on it's just kind of how they'll end up meeting and I just found that a bit it dragged on a bit I was like okay can we get them all together again like come on we don't need to be doing all this and in that middle section where they're all separate, I just felt like it was a bit clunky as they kept moving from place to place to place and jumping about and they never settled in one place. It felt like lots of random events strung together rather than one linear plot. And a lot of characters just seemed to bump into each other or run into each other, which I found kind of unbelievable for a large city like Paris because they wouldn't just randomly run into each other and I wanted more thought process into how they were going to find each other. I really like the way they tied beasts back into this film. I know that this film can't be as heavily focused on the Fantastic Beasts as the first film, but I like the way they're bringing them all back in, like the Niffler and things like that. And what I thought was absolutely amazing was the, I believe it's called the Zuwu, which is the Chinese cat dragon thing. Um, it was one of my favourite parts of the film. I know that the face was all done by practical effects by Nick Dudman, who did all the practical effects for the Harry Potter films, and it's just outstanding. It looks so real and so beautiful. The way it moves is amazing. I also love the Kelpie. I thought that was beautiful. The Nifflers and the baby Nifflers. I loved how they brought, they didn't overuse the Niffler too much. It was kind of comedy relief, but then in the end it kind of saved the day and brought it all back together. So I just loved how they tied the beasts into it. That made me really, really happy. Another bit that just made me so happy and was by far my favourite part of the whole film was the entire Back to Hogwarts sequence. It was filled with so many callbacks without being corny and so much attention to detail. I loved the vintage look of the robes. I love that they went to that effort to create new robes that looked appropriate for the 1920s. I love that you could see Quidditch players flying around in the background. The going back to the old sets was amazing. It just made me really warm and happy inside which I realise is how kind of Hogwarts used to make me feel when I used to watch the films and it gave me that exact same feeling so that entire kind of 15 minute sequence where they go back to Hogwarts was just outstanding and I absolutely loved it. And in that sequence they had the Mirror of Erised bit which I kind of had slightly mixed feelings about. I really liked the route they went down with Dumbledore and Grindelwald and I know there was some worry before about it not being explicit enough that Dumbledore and Grindelwald were like an item but I found it pretty explicit. When he said we were closer than brothers um, I think from the acting you can take away from it that they were some sort of of romantic item and I really liked how they did it. It felt tasteful, it felt right for Dumbledore's character and I think they are going to explore that more in later films. Something that I was confused about with the Mirror of Erised though was the fact that it almost did a flashback with Dumbledore. From what I understand the Mirror of Erised it shows your heart's desire so it will just show kind of one static image kind of thing like it just shows Harry's parents standing there it doesn't show them necessarily doing anything whereas with Dumbledore it was basically showing everything that happened with him and Grindelwald including the blood pact so that the audience could find out about it and I don't know whether that was just Dumbledore looking at Grindelwald's face and then remembering all of that or if he was seeing it in the mirror and I found that a bit confusing and not true to how the mirror worked in the first films. So speaking of magical objects and how the magic worked and things like that, there are a lot of parts of the film that just made me go, how does that happen? How does that work? So for example, the bit where Newt gets to Paris and then he gets something and blows it and gold things appear and suddenly he can see what happened the night before. And then the bit at the end of the film where Grindelwald seemed to turn into or produce some sort of ice fire dragon demon thing 
I just didn't understand how it was working. Um, and something I really liked about the original Harry Potters was I felt that the magic had almost a real world understanding, like a scientific way that it worked. Magic could only do so much, you couldn't just do anything. Whereas in this film I feel like they're going for what's cinematically good. And that's obviously because this is a film first rather than a book, so they want to go for what looks good, which is great. I love great cinematic sequences, but I also like understanding how the magic works and where it comes from, and I just don't feel like I'm getting that from these films. I just feel like people, you know, wave their arms about and things are flying around them. Um, and part of that might be because in the original Harry Potters we were watching children do magic and they were still learning and they didn't know all of these crazy things they could do, whereas these are fully fledged adults. But I just want more understanding of how different levels of wizards can do different magic and what different spells do to make different effects and I just don't feel like I'm getting that in these films. So something that I absolutely loved in the first Fantastic Beasts film was the links and subtle jabs and sometimes not so subtle jabs at real world problems and real world criticisms of what's going on in kind of our political climate and our world currently and this film continued on that theme which I really enjoyed. So I really love how in these films it's showing the path of how people get into extremism and fascism. I always felt like with the original Harry Potters there wasn't enough time spent exploring why people wanted to follow Voldemort apart from the fact that they were evil people. And in this film, with Grindelwald's speech, you can really see how people get suckered into these beliefs, which has real world applications to things that we are going through now with political leaders. So I just found his speech to the room really really persuasive and really believable as to why people would follow him. And the part where he essentially manipulated a woman to attack the auras, so the auras then attacked her, so then the auras were seen by everybody as the bad people and everyone would definitely respect Grindelwald was amazing because he was verbally saying don't do anything to the auras, don't do anything to the auras, but there were hints that people should, and the woman attacked the auras because of that, and it was just so clever the way it played on your mind, and I just thought that bit was really well written and acted by everyone. And again, tying it into the real world, they seem to be hinting that these films are going to link into World War II with that kind of memory prediction thing Grindelwald showed everyone, which I would absolutely love if they do it correctly. I know that the final showdown with Grindelwald and Dumbledore happens in 1945, which is the same year that World War II ends, so I would absolutely love it if they found a great way to link them together. And speaking of linking it to real world events, let's go back to the Titanic. So we see a boat that's travelling from England to America sinking. Date-wise, it would line up if it's the Titanic, I kind of worked it out in my head, so I just found that really funny. The fact that they didn't try to go overboard with it, they didn't show like the ship breaking in half, but if you kind of know the dates and timelines of what's happening, you're like, yeah, that's the Titanic, they've linked that into the Titanic, well done, well done. And linking from the Titanic thing, I really liked Lita's character. Um, I thought she was a really well written, interesting character because she walked the line between good and evil, which is really really hard to do and you kind of hated her at points but felt a lot of sympathy for her, so I thought she was really well written. However, I did find her story a little bit rambly and I didn't really enjoy the kind of what turned out to be the entire crux of the plot, which is who is Credence's family. Um, I just think that kind of storyline has been overdone and is a trope and I didn't really like that that ended up being the hinge of the film because I didn't really care that much. Like, I like Credence as a character a lot and I don't really care about his heritage, so the kind of is he Lita's brother, is he not, oh my gosh, we're switching to different characters who are telling us different things, I was just kind of not enthralled by that. So I was disappointed that that turned out to be the main plot point. So the big twist at the end. I want to say I really liked it, I do, because I really want to love these films, but I just didn't like it, I didn't like the twist, I thought it was contrived, and if it is true, if Credence is a Dumbledore, 
I just don't really like it as a plot point because I wanted these films to be quite separate from Harry Potter. I liked that there was going to be small ties to it, but I didn't want it to tie itself so closely to the Harry Potter franchise that it ends up messing with the canon of the original. So in general, I just found this plot a bit meh compared to the first film. It wasn't a bad film. I really enjoyed seeing it. I'm sure I'll watch it again. The actors, the characters, the sets, everything to do with the production of the film was amazing, but I just found the plot a bit clunky and probably a little bit irrelevant to the overall story JK Rowling is trying to tell here. I don't think when we look at the five films as a whole when it's all over that this film will have moved the plot forwards that much at all. And obviously if I'm wrong I will come back and say it but I just don't think that much happened. I thought it was a bit filler. Basically, it was just okay. And I'm saying that as one of the biggest Harry Potter fans that exists. I love Harry Potter and I love the first Fantastic Beast film, but I don't want to be blinded by my love of the franchise into saying that this film was amazing when it just wasn't. So that was all my thoughts on Crimes of Grindelwald. I'm sure I missed loads out, but I've only seen the film once last night and I feel like I need to watch it again to kind of gather all my thoughts properly. But that was all my thoughts firstly, and please let me know in the dungeon section down below what your thoughts are. Let's have a discussion because I really want to talk about this film with people because I think it might be a little bit divisive and I really want to see what other people think. Please remember that you can follow me on social media like my Instagram. Um, I went to an early fan screening of this film and ended up being surprised by the cast making an appearance at the fan screening. So follow me on Instagram to see things like that because I didn't know that was going to happen but it did and it was all on my Instagram stories so that's on screen now. Remember, you can subscribe to this channel for new Harry Potter videos every single Friday and let me know if you want me to make any other Crimes of Grindelwald videos and what they would be. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!